Camper Profiler Tones and Talks Legends Tribute. This is the <coughs> Steve Vai edition. Together with Mr. Thomas Dill, welcome. Hi. Uh, we'll be looking into uh, yeah, the tonal worlds of Mr. Steve Vai. But before we start and get into all this, uh, here's uh, the little excerpt from the Legends Tribute collection video. <laughs> basically that's uh, the thing uh it's one of the uh i don't know most significant uh tracks from the passion and warfare album which was uh we will know lo learn all about that uh, uh, from you later um and uh, i think it was already yeah it was played with uh, something like this but uh, with a seventh string uh, the story goes and um yeah, actually, this one, I mean, this is white, like uh, Steve's Evo guitars now, Evo and Flow, uh, he called them. Uh, this was from the first production run, that's actually true. Um, oh. And it was in Desert Sun Yellow, and you can see it here with the, mm. the nasty pyramid uh, uh, in lace and the maple necks, because now these, nowadays, all these come with the uh, the rosewood fretboards yeah. and the green ones we are orig original from 68 or 86 uh, 86 or 87 uh were the green one and then there was the yellow one desert sun yellow it's called and uh, in here you can see you can see still a little bit of the oh, yeah <laughs> the pink under the um <laughs> the thing which is still the original one by the way the tremolo is still original. It's totally rusty and uh, everything is original. I just had to get rid of that nasty yellow um, color. And uh, also I changed the um, the pickups to um, Seymour Duncan's, which were in a cheap hammer. So, oh, um, okay. <laughs> um, and the pickup, of course, is also different. It was black. And uh, yeah, more about this maybe later. Um, <laughs> we have both, we found out this yeah. one. Bought, yeah. Bought in, uh, I think it was 80, 88 or 89, myself. In 89, it came out, Warner Brothers, and I have this. Okay, uh, then it was 89. I don't know where I got it from because it, it was really hard to get because the price here, 4980. Um, yeah. It's in dollar. No. 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 <laughs> it's DM. It's Deutschmark. Yeah. So some music store also had it in, in yeah. stock or they were able to order it. And I got it because of, uh, you know, Ladies Night in Buffalo. Oh, yeah. Kudos to Mr. Roth when he was still cool. <laughs> and uh, yeah, not too much talk before. Uh, Thomas <laughs> had been looking into. Um, the tones, uh, uh, the tone for no, the tones for for the love of God, yeah. And, um, prepared some additional information as well. So let's get into the tone. Start the keynote. Of, Start the keynote. Okay. Uh, for Instify. Yeah. Here we are. So, for the love of God is from we said that already. Passion and warfare released 1999 and recorded at the mothership this was uh steve weiss studio at that time uh, which he built near by his house i think producer was yeah of course steve Vai. and starting with the guitars um you said that already he used um 
I got this information from the songbook. Uh, as in this, uh, we, we have the, the guitar extravaganza from the David Roth, Roth, Lee Roth albums. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote some, some liner notes about the instruments he used on that album too. So Gem 7, Gem 77 and 70, 777 was used. He had three different models of the universe. This is the seven string guitar. And uh, somebody uh, said on the internet that he played the, and you said it already too, uh, he played for the love of God on this one universe guitar. Then the legendary uh, Charbel Green Mini guitar, a Tom Anderson Strut, the choral sitar, sitar guitar uh, was used uh, at for the love of God for the rhythm track for the rhythm picking guitar you, you hear that on, on the recording mm -hmm. and some guild six and 12 string acoustics and a BC rich double neck guitar. Here's Steve Y with the green mini um, uh, a charble guitar which was uh, later on equipped with Dimasio pickups uh, and he used that guitar for Edom and Smile and the Skyscraper album. And this maybe is the, the some, some, the inspiration of his jam guitar, uh, for his jam guitar. Yeah, it was. With those uh, um, Dimasio pickups and the, the cut out of the body. Uh, nobody used that at that time for the Floyd Rose so that he can bend uh, higher notes. And that was uh, made too at the uh, Green Mini. And here's uh, the one in green. Mm -hmm. um, this is, uh, yeah, released 1987, the gem. And this is one, one from the, the picture from the 30th anniversary uh, series from Ibanez. And here's the man with the universe guitar. It has also Dimasio pickups, HSA pickup configuration, and a Floyd Rose tremolo. And here's from his website. Uh, yeah, if you're interested in Steve Weiss guitars, go to his website. There you find everything. Uh, I think he has pictures of 400 guitars he's using. Uh, and, and he, he played for some uh, time in his life and for some recordings. It's really interesting. And uh, amps, a very uh, precise information from, from the songbook. He had seven modded Marshall amps. These were the main amps for these recordings. And uh, Carvin preamp, Rockman stereo, Rackmount preamp, ADA preamp, and for the clean tones, Fender Deluxe Reverb and Roland Jazz Chorus. Marshall and Mesa Boogie Power Amps, because he played uh, at that time uh, since the Skyscraper Tour, I think, with uh, Bradshaw Rack, with uh, using the Marshalls or Carvin amps as preamps or the preamps from these amps and using power amps uh, for higher volume on stage because David Lee Roth uh, liked loud guitars on stage. And uh, so they needed uh, more power and two power amps to, to get that power. And some things, uh, some guitars were direct, uh, recorded direct into the MIG preamps. And here we have uh, Steve Vai uh, at the, I think it was supper area uh, era um with the carbon x100b which he uh <clears throat> promoted and this is the amp with a um five band eq and here is a picture of the marshall a marshall super lead mod by modded by jose arredondo i hope i pronounced the name right <laughs> and he was uh introduced by Steve Stevens to Marshall amps. And uh, he tried some Marshall amps, some stock Marshall amps, and they didn't sound right for him. And uh, he got some modded Marshall amps for the Eat em and Smile recordings. And uh, yeah, he used that in that era, of, uh, these Marshall amps and uh, different amps. Here's a, a picture of the Marshall JMP. 
and uh, the moddings were of, of about yeah we talked uh, in the in the last episode about gain uh, they they already had more gain and uh, a specific uh, frequency range and a preamp out because he's using that with those uh, rack power amps so this is uh, yeah uh, seven marshall amps and he said in that book that he uh, used they they all sound diff sounded different and he used uh the one that fits the best for the part he was playing now coming to the effects uh pedals that he used were the boss ds1 boss sd1 mxr distortion mxr phaser flanger maestro phase shifter mutron b phase and some other pedals here we see uh DS1 is is one uh, the, the the famous overdrive or distortion he was using uh, in at his pedal board several times, and uh, in his Bradshaw rack he had even tight H300, TC stereo chorus and 2290, and Yamaha SPX90 uh, multi effect uh, device. A Roland SDD 3000, a delay, and an old H969 from Eventide. And that's not enough. Uh, here's, uh, first of all, here's uh, the H3000, which is a main part for one song on that album. I come to that later. And uh, yeah, outboard effects in his studio uh, were Lexicon 480, the legendary reverb. Yamaha reverbs, Neve and Uri uh, compressors, and MXR rack mount flanger and phaser. And here's a picture of the mm -hmm. 480L, this uh, digital uh, reverb unit uh, that you can yeah, buy as a plugin from, I think, every plugin. Uh, <laughs> everyone who, who sells yeah, yeah. plugins, I think. Okay, so this is the huge amount of equipment that Steve Y had for his recordings. I only have the profiler and nothing else. And uh, yeah, introducing the very much expert for Steve Y <laughs> sounds, <laughs> Tom Wendt. No. What do we have to add? Uh, no, just a, a little bit of uh, uh, um, side information. This uh, Jose Arredondo. Mm -hmm. Mod, uh, mods were really, really famous in LA at the time. And uh, um, it happened like three years ago or two years ago that um, Pete Thorne, we know him, um, got hold of uh, one of these amps and he made a video about this. And um, I think it's a couple of years ago, so I can share that because I emailed him uh, immediately and asked him if he uh, at least because he had to give it back that he at least uh, uh, created a profile from that did he and he he did of course he wouldn't mention oh. it but i think um maybe he's now mad at me by uh saying this uh, uh but of course he keeps the, keeps that one to himself and he never talked about that yeah. um I because think... I, I watched the video too mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, we, we need to to uh put the link below because it's great information about uh, that great sounding amp. And uh, he had a, a, a chat with uh, Steve Vai also in that video, where he uh, explains how he got to these uh, amps. So I, I got a lot of information from, from that chat too. And I thought it would be great to have a profile of this amp or some modded amp that, that would be easier for me then. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, most probably not, because uh, again, uh, we had this with uh, Joe Satriani and much more significantly with uh, Jeff Beck. Uh, it's, of course, in the fingers. And um, hmm. I, at the time, when I got this, um, I mean, I liked what he was doing, uh, Mr. Vai, and also I was playing in a, in a tribute, no, not in a tribute band, a typical rock cover band. And uh, this guitar uh, had so many things going for it, which were new and unique uh, at that time, because first uh, the uh, the locking tremolo, which yeah. was cool, and uh, this 
this thing that you you said um, enables you to pull up but not only this the Floyd Rose sits deeper closer to the yeah. body more like a strut thing because uh, the Floyd Rose this had usually a half a centimeter higher uh, uh, position on the yeah. top so it was more like a Les Paul here this hand uh, position yeah. then uh, a strut with this uh, the flat strut feel came back and then you could uh, uh, easily more easily go between clean sounds and uh, distorted sounds uh, when you were playing you know cover gigs and stuff like that and yeah. I took this just from the because it's been sitting since I moved into the studio here um, three months ago the guitar was sitting there and I took it and it was still tuned because yeah. that was the thing uh, that still amazes me uh, during the gigs I never well for safety I had a second guitar with me but these just stay in tune this is so mm. ridiculous 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 um uh, it's so great and uh still i mean this is very versatile guitar so for, years, for 30 years oh. no 40 uh, 38 years uh or very versatile guitar and uh, i always fancied the ebony fretboard but hey uh, i kept it uh, at least in that respect um, um original what i was what i wanted to say is that um uh the 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 person and uh, the playing is really important and especially with um um when for the love of god is it is as there as well but uh, for example ladies night in buffalo from the edem and smile record which we know ted templeman produced that one mm. Uh, we know that this was just uh, the demo part. Do you know that? No. Uh, Ladies Night in Buffalo, um, I think one of the greatest songs on the, yeah. or the greatest song on the uh, Edom and Smile record. It's just, uh, you know, there's a lot of funky stuff in there, yeah. a, lot of, yeah. uh, a, a little bit of tapping and, and uh, um, squeals and squeaks in between. It's just one performance. Uh, when they were trying to, oh. where would things go? And he was just playing stuff like that and using volume knob again, mm -hmm. and the pickup switch to go from the distorted stuff to uh, the clean funky stuff. Huh. And uh, he was kicking once uh, the distortion for the solo, I guess. And he assumed, of course, uh, this will be produced. From that performance, I will uh, select all the things I would like to double and, you know, triple and quadruple the guitars on the mm -hmm. Ted Templeman set. No effing way. This is the performance. This has so much soul and uh, creativity there. So, and there again, no? he had just uh, the volume knob yeah. uh, that uh, enabled him to do this. So that's also a very important thing. And I think, I don't know how you approach that. And that's now going to be the interesting thing. Um, uh, how to go to about the, for the love of God tone. Yeah. Um, for me, it was, I don't have these modded marshals. Um, and I thought, okay, uh, it's nice to know what he was using, but I go totally different way now. Um, because the first thing is um, I used uh, a JCM 800 model or rig uh, profile because um, the JCM 800 is something like Marshall's answer to all these uh, modded uh, plexi amps. Master volume, more gain, different frequency range. So that was the model what, what I was using or what, what I took for, for that sound. And then, uh, yeah, the tone is really a creamy singing lead tone. So, and that's uh, what, what I like to, to rebuild. And uh, yeah, I, I used some, some different stuff. Some people might not guess. So here we are. <clears throat> and again, you find this rig at Rick Packs, Kemper, 
Legends Tribute Collection with the 30 bricks here, Le Tribute Collection number four. And here's Steve Y. And uh, first of all, I use the noise gate at uh, the front of the signal chain because it's a noisy sound um, with a lot of gain. Then a wah wah pedal is just prepared uh, for the solo sound and a compressor in front of the amp, creating some more gain. The amp, here you see it's a Marshall CM800 from Michael Britt, uh, from the Michael Britt collection. And uh, Studio EQ just to match uh, the tone, the frequency range to the recorded sound. Micro pitch to get the tone a little bit fatter delay to get more sustain and natural reverb so this is the sound for me it was important that you can really have a uh, one note playing And it sounds at the same level a long time. So this was, uh, yeah, the aim to do uh, the, 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 yeah, what, what it needed, that tone. And um, I will start and turn everything off. So <clears throat> here's the basic tone from the amp. Gain at 6.2, definition at 5.7 and uh, middle treble presence a little bit raised. Sounds okay. And has a bit, yeah, a bit higher gain. Uh, just for your info, neck pickup is uh, the one mm -hmm. that you need to take. And uh, reverb. adds a little bit of sustain so the tone sounds a little bit longer it's a uh, decay time at 2.5 seconds uh middle room size and the mix is at 60 percent um the next thing is the studio eq um with a high cut at 6.8 and nothing else raised or a cut down and just a low cut at 78 hertz and then micro pitch a little bit of detune and the mix is just 10 percent so i will show you the difference this is without and this is with It's a minimal difference, but the sound is so. So for me, it's a little bit more, yeah, woolly, a little bit more warmer tone. If you turn the mix up, it's too much uh, detuning for me. So uh, I really took that at that low level. It's just mm -hmm. some some little bit of sugar, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sugar on the cake. And um, <clears throat> two tap delay, uh, a quarter note and an eight note, mix at 63%. And this adds, uh, yeah, a little bit of sustain because when you play one note, one long note, <laughs> So it stays longer at the at, uh, same level. And the most important thing for this high gain tone is the compressor. When I turn that on, compressor, high intensity, mix at 84%, attack at 6.4 and squash at minus 0 0.6. And the volume is raised up a little bit. So here it's, uh, the, it's I like it sound. <laughs> With 
without a compressor. Here it is. So, so this is very important. This, this one note gets boosted from that compressor. And, and uh, with that, you get um, <clears throat> you get uh, this this singing lead tone without getting muddy. So uh, the alternative for that would be uh, taking a pure booster or taking a little bit more gain on the amp, but then you get a more muddy sound. So this is this is the thing getting uh, yeah high gain but defined high gain. This is my approach to that sound. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for, for this sound, for, for the lead tone of uh, For the Love of God. I've uh, added the war pedal just here, and uh, I switched it off because um, you need to switch it on and oh it's bypass at stop uh, you need to turn that to on um, because he, he he does a lot of slight var movements and uh, to to have these movements uh, played or, or heard you need to have it on because at bypass at stop it uh, um, turns off the war pedal when when you stop with uh, with the pedal <laughs> So for the lead tone, it's it's some uh, boosted frequencies. You can could you, you can use the wah for that, and that also adds a little bit more uh, to the sustain uh, situation because yeah. uh, you 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 get that additional boost. Yeah, and yeah. Um, that's also really. Um, how would you say it? Um, uh, because you're so, uh, in German, we say consequent. Um, um, because that's exactly as I hear it, uh, because I couldn't see you play, uh, uh, because you had the screen, uh, um, uh, the Rick manager screen. Um, it is the tone. Because mm -hmm. I always think uh, I found that tone. <laughs> But it isn't because uh, I just took the easy way, the easy route, uh, because nowadays gain is cheap. It doesn't mm -hmm. cost anything. Get more gain and bobs your ankle. So I have more sustain than you. So that's easy. Yeah, yeah. But, but you have the more distinct tone because um, that's what I realized in the first moment when you hit the strings. It, this this tone builds. It's like it's uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, it builds up in a completely different way. Uh, the way you put it together and uh, you 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 play it, and it's a little bit more defined as well because it ends and. Uh, mm -hmm. There again, when uh, you know we, you 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 get into the sustain is over phase, mm -hmm. again, the finger um, yeah. plays a role, and you hear that what you don't hear with that um, lot amount of uh, um, of gain that I have, and that really makes the uh, the difference, and that's why mm -hmm. you are <laughs> the chosen one. Uh, <laughs> big, 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 yeah, yeah, big. Be because you, as we say in Germany, um, uh, always hit the nail on the head by getting, <laughs> you're not going the uh, the easy way, the cheap road, uh, uh, but you really get the essence of the tones, right? As it as they were on the album. Because uh, everyone these days is, uh, of course, uh, is able to play that. And I had the, the chance to, uh, this was really weird. Um, um, hmm. 
93 maybe 92 there was a there was a tour uh, it was uh, i don't know who aerosmith and white snake mm. oh and the steve Vai version of white snake mm -hmm. and uh i remember it because it was so weird i came from a trade show that day it was uh, the atari show rip atari computers uh, where i had to work and i had to wear a suit the entire day and then i, I went home uh, uh got changed and went to uh, dortmund uh, where they pl were playing westfalenhalle and um um the concert was already going but i definitely wanted to see uh, to see steve Vai with uh, with whitesnake and uh, as i was going around the hall uh, i saw a door which was closing very slowly because just one janitor went in there he had the key and i was so huh could you and uh, i said let's just give it a try and nobody was was watching and i was in and i was in the round mm -hmm. <laughs> inside mm -hmm. the hall and uh, i could even sneak into the uh the concert area then so i went in somehow for free and this was the tour when steve Fai had three solo spots he was playing uh for the love of god mm -hmm. Um, and two more I forgot which ones um, but this was just insane uh, he was playing it with the Whitesnake band with Adrian Vandenberg on mm -hmm. the second guitar uh, Tommy Aldrich uh, I think is the drummer and I don't know who the bassist was but they were playing uh, live uh, for the love of God and uh, you know I was dying and then yeah. I saw him uh, very close uh, at the time when he had this alien love secret out uh, in the house of blues in um, mm. Los Angeles on the, on the sunset strip after an AES show when we were there that was also cool to see that in a small um, location there and uh yeah i even played one of his guitars um uh, just comes to my mind and this is also the thing it's just a guitar it's just wood the, wood and some magnetics there was of course some yeah. mojo but this was more here like uh than 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 it was in the wood because it's him he makes the sound uh, yeah. We were visit, visiting Thomas Nordek's place with all his fancy gear, Thomas Nordek, Steve Weiss guitar tech. Guitar tech. And um, yeah, so, and that's the thing. And um, yeah, so thanks uh, to you again, uh, which brings back a little bit the, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 okay. of course, <laughs> of course, no, no. Um, uh, no, thanks to you again that, that you bring, uh, you know, that original tone, uh, which uh, gives us more food for thought again, because uh, so many things are, have, are been taken for granted these days. Hmm. And the nuances uh, get lost in a way. And thanks again third time for bringing that back and you have one more thing i know yeah, i have something, at least, at least uh, one more thing. the the special special adding on that tone because uh i said that before the 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 eventide uh plays a really big role on one song and it's ballerina 1224 where he plays with uh this eventide uh sound he created and uh if you like to play that too you can do that and i'll show you how so we go to the rig manager um you can take this rig and just turn the gain down so point maybe uh I use the, the, the bridge pickup and the middle pickup, a cleaner version, and then delay off. And instead of the micro pitch, take a delay and a pitch delay, the dual chromatic, and then there's a preset called Ballerina. And this is how it sounds like. 
you need to uh, take the tempo. Now I have, I don't know which tempo do I have? 117, I don't know uh, what, what the, the song tempo is. So uh, just for, for your information, here it is. Um, this delay creates two um, pitch shifted delay repeats, which is nine uh, half steps above the original note and five half steps above the original note. And that's uh, what Steve Y uh, wrote down in the liner notes of this songbook, uh, a perfect fourth, the five steps and a major sixth note and pan to left and right. And this is the sound. Um, all, all created by this, um, yeah, pitch shifted delay sound. And um, yeah, you just need to store this rig in the profiler or in the, your local library, and you're done with that. And you can play this song. Before you can play this song, you need to practice that, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the, the special one for, for Steve Weiss Ballerina 1224. And, Ballerina yeah. Sikia Marossa. His mother, you, you said before. Yeah, I'm, I think I read in an interview that uh, he recorded his mother, uh, his mother saying that. Mm. Yeah, uh, for me, that's all about uh, the Steve Vai sound and Steve Vai sounding. If you as an expert uh, for <laughs> Steve no. Vai logic, uh, do, do you have anything to add? No, just, uh, uh, um, I mean, if you're, if we're looking at this album, uh, Passion and Warfare, uh, this was just a, I mean, Eden and Smile was already a, a big thing uh, on top of uh, the goat, as he was referred to, Van Halen, because I think, uh, um, Steve Vai um, added uh, uh, a notch or two of, uh, you know, um, a virtuoso level. But, but to also, but also, yeah, fat riffs, yeah, fat and... playing, great ideas of, of sounds. You know, right. when you read these liner notes, he, he knows everything what he wants to do in this in this book we have uh the 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 Edom and smile mm -hmm. there are all the settings for the uh, different songs that he had for for his delay and and everything so he's the guy who really knows how to dial in tones and uh, uh, he said that in that uh, Pete Thorne video uh he uh gave some uh informations or some some ideas from him ended up in the eventide uh, he worked with them together in the eventide processor so uh he's really uh yeah genius genius in guitar playing genius in creating sounds yeah and and uh, uh at that time i mean uh that was uh edom and smile was, no a uh, passion warfare was uh, 87 or the 90 as well but he, he recorded that uh, in a, a period, period, I think, from, yeah. from, from 85 to nine, 89 or something like that, mm -hmm. because uh, he couldn't finish the, the record because of David Lee uh, Roth and Whitesnake. <clears throat> right. And uh, but if you look at, uh, um, you know, the sounds um, and, and how early some things which came became big later uh, were already on there i mean this big melodic stuff uh, um, then he the effort he did with the video uh, yeah. because he uh, he just uh, had a friend uh, who uh, rented a, a big uh, beta camera uh, and they both went up uh, into the mountains you know yeah. uh, they were there was snow i mean uh, when you see the video by the way for yeah. uh, um, for the love of god uh, this guy must have been freezing to hell and he was yeah. already into this 
uh, uh, special uh, meditation things and and uh, uh, not eating for two weeks and stuff like that to clean that his was, body yeah, and stuff uh, like that. Another nerdy thing I, I read uh, somewhere uh, that he was uh, fastening, so not eating for for ten days, and on the fourth day he recorded for the love of God. So if you like to be in the same state of mind, you you need to eat. Not no, eat for forty for four days. <laughs> uh, yeah. To 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 get in the zone. Uh, the zone, yes. Yeah. To get and, the vibrato right. Yeah, and but mm -hmm. then adding, uh, you know, the weird speech stuff. I mean, here for 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 uh, uh, the audience is listening, uh, and um, um, uh, there was erotic nightmares, and then. Um, um, David Coverdale is saying something, yeah. um, and uh, uh, his teacher, uh, I don't know what that track was called um, uh, on that album. Um, uh, so he put this guitar into this completely new uh, cosmos without being too over the cliff, except for things like yeah. ballerina and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, was really special and uh, I must admit that's not uh, uh, the stuff I, I like the most and um, going on um, there are always some really nice things because especially when he's playing like a little bit bluesy and a little bit melodic yeah. like for the love of God and then the next one is um, uh, Tender Surrender yeah, uh, which was to die for when I saw him at uh, um, House of Blues mm. Um but uh, he's more into this weird stuff. And this is a little bit too far away for me musically now. So um, I really uh, love that impact and this uh, creativity and his willingness to experiment and still be musical. Because also he has this incredible musical training. He was writing yeah. all the arrangements for yeah. uh, That's Life and uh, um, the other... Um, um, horn section thing on the Edom and Smile album yeah. and stuff like this. It's just amazing. and the way he is doubling himself and yeah. all and arranging all these delay stuff and the, doubling the, the vibrato things. And this was just totally f uh, from 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 outer space. The, the arrangements are really absolutely phenomenal. So at the skyscraper, Edom and Smile. Uh, also at this White Snake Slip of the Tongue album, and of course, uh, Passion and Warfare. This, these guitar arrangements are really killer. Yeah, and this, um, when I, whenever you try to do this at home, uh, or get into this, how to recreate this, I mean, with mixing desks and uh, tape machines, guitar amps, pedals, cables, microphones, to get all these various sounds together. You need to really move some stuff. Yeah. You always need to get up and then compare and make, take notes and whatever. There was no recall and stuff no. like that. So that's a completely beast to, to put yeah. something like that together. And uh, yeah, the, that, that opened the 90s and then, uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of things have happened, but uh, so that's great to hear that uh, the sustain of uh, for the love of God is indeed not endless and easy. It's no. <laughs> uh, it builds up. So <laughs> thanks for that. And uh, yeah, greetings to Steve Vai, to Thomas Nordic, and to well, Ruta Sepetis was his manager at that time, and. Uh, I met her once because uh, from Steinberg we we gave him a Cubase score because he was also working with an orchestra. Mm. I mean, this was the only rock guitar player who could uh, write yeah. orchestra arrangements, stuff like that. This was so, so weird. Anywho, so much about that. Again, we said more words than uh, were required for this, but uh, it was fun. <laughs> thanks to Thomas again. <laughs> or uh, uh, providing the tone and yeah try this at home and if, even if you increase the gain uh, in the amp to to make it easier maybe it leads you to somewhere else and share that with us take care okay. bye
Bye. Thanks for watching.